Welcome to my new video and this time we have a Casio SGW450 on a review. Placing this watch in a product line of Casio watches is somewhat tricky. Let's say it's a pro track model on a budget. Has a twin sensor but no protection like G-Shock. It wears the Casio Illuminator line badge. It has, I think it's a great watch for part time hikers and nature enthusiasts. It has these cool, ga cool gadgets like altimeter, barometer and thermometer, but no compass, so a twin sensor watch. I previously owned the SGW300 on a metal strap. Had fun wearing it too. Very versatile watch, not a bang proof, but it's not expensive either. So it all depends how much do you pay for it. This model is pretty much the same, only upgraded version, cosmetically of course. So what are the features this watch has to offer? Well, it's an illuminator, low temperature resistance of up to minus 10 degrees Celsius. Neo display, barometer, thermometer from that ranges from minus 10 to plus 60 degrees Celsius. 10,000 meter altimeter, wall time function, stopwatch function, uh, timer, 5 daily alarms and button tones on and off. Of course, there, and then there's the automatic calendar with date, day and month, 20 or 12 or 24 hour timekeeping, spherical glass, acrylic resin, resin, and resin band, as well as the plastic buckle. And the Casio says it will last uh, three years with this battery. Water classification is up to 10 bars. <laughs> Only drawback visually is the negative screen, which is hard to read. It's much easier reading in the dark with when pressing the light button. And in general, these displays are drawback, not only on this model. And at the price of the 79 US dollars, it's a good value for the money, not, not too expensive. Let's get through some basic operations and see what this watch can do. What would be the basics of basic operations? now? Uh, all these keys or the buttons are inscribed on the outer bezel and we have the altimeter light adjust and the mode button altimeter button obviously gets to the altimeter mode so uh, for a readout there's the altimeter uh, ease of access uh, pushing the mode button gets us to the timekeeping the upper right button is the light and illum it illuminates the um, back screen of the to these two uh, digital displays. The illumination is excellent, uh, but it cannot uh, uh, show on this um, light panel that is uh, that I'm using to uh, uh, shoot this video. Next up, the mode button shuffles between the functions of the barometer. The that's the first um, option or the first mode from the timekeeping mode. Next up, we have the um, uh, a second time zone, then the stopwatch, the timer, uh, alarm, and uh, operation of the setting the uh, watch hands. Next press and the higher pitch of the sound gets, uh, gets us to the um, standard timekeeping mode. So those are the basic operations of the watch and what, what this watch can do. Um, thank you very much for watching. That would be uh, all for this review. and. Please do leave a like if you haven't and subscribe also. Thanks. Welcome to the tutorial part of this review. In this segment, I'm going to talk about all the representatives or the screen indicators that this watch has to offer. Let's start off with the watch hands. So obviously this is the hour hand and this is the minute hand. Moving on to the digital subdials, the first digit over here shows the month and the day and we have over here the seconds indicator over here uh, we have the hour and the minutes and up there up top we have the am or the pm indicator over here we have the uh, day uh, inscribed in english and over here oh, that's the graphic that's the graphic for the um <coughs> uh, barometer or the barometer mode Setting the time and date on SGW450 is done like this, whilst in the standard timekeeping mode, and we are currently in the standard timekeeping mode, 
hold down the adjust button maybe this is the better angle for you to see hold down the adjust button until set hold stops to flash and there it is now using these two buttons over here I can shuffle between the time zones over here and let's say I want to get it to the my time zone and that's the Paris time zone so there it was so I've uh, found my time zone next up would be the uh, pressing the mode button to move to the daylight saving time is it on or off currently it's off but I can shuffle it using this button over here the LT button next press of the mode button uh, gets us to the 10, 12 or 24 hour time format and it's blinking so I'm gonna change it to 24 hour by pressing this button over here next press of the mode button gets us to the seconds usually there's no um, need to uh, touch the seconds value but if you want to you can just reset it by pressing the LT button next press moves to the hours and currently uh, the hours are blinking so I'm gonna move to 12 because it's the 12 o'clock so it's not correct there it is it's 12 o'clock moving to the uh, minutes value and it's 23 minutes there it is so next press of the mode button gets us to the year setting it says it's 2010 but it's actually 2020 okay now I have changed the value of the years next press of the mode button gets us to the month setting is the first so January next press gets us to the setting the um, day it's January the 16th let me find it January the 16th okay next up is the button button tone operation or is it on or off so currently it says it's on I'm gonna mute it or leave it at the button tone on I'm gonna leave it at on and moving to the illumination duration by pressing the mode button again and the light is blinking I don't know if camera can catch it but it says one you can shuffle it to one and three I'm gonna leave it at one next press it's the temperature units and the Celsius is flashing over here to move to Fahrenheit press the LD button but I'm gonna leave it at the Celsius next up it's the uh, altitude unit currently it's flashing meters by pressing the LT you can switch to feet I'm gonna keep it at meters next press would cha uh, change us to the barometer units and it's flashing hectopascals but you can change it to the uh, imperial units I'm gonna leave it at hectopascals and next press, press of the mode button gets us to the beginning and setting the time zone once we are done with the all the settings and I have done the settings I'm gonna press the adjust button once and get back to the standard timekeeping now we have to watch the hands uh, will they align to the uh, correct time over here 1225 yes that's the time so pretty much we are done with the how to set the time and date and all the units on the values of the watch hand home position correction the hour and minute hands of the watch can be thrown off by the exposure to strong magnetism or impact the watch is designed to correct the hour and minute hand positions manually. All of the operations in the sections are being performed in the hand setting mode. So let's get to the hand setting mode by pressing the mode button and we are in the hand set mode. Uh, in the, in, whilst in this mode, hold down the adjust button for about 2 seconds. And there it is, zeros are flashing and these, our, these uh, hands should align uh, they are in the correct positions if they are pointed at 12 o'clock if they are not use uh, the LT and the light button to adjust those settings so by each pressing of these two buttons aligns the uh, hands properly so once you, have done, once you are done with that 
and you say the hands are aligned and they are press the adjust button to return to the time standard timekeeping and this will cause the hour and minute hands to move to the current timekeeping mode time and uh, they are let's just get back to the standard timekeeping there it is 1228 and they are correct barometer or the, or the thermometer this watch uses a pressure sensor to measure the air pressure or the barometric pressure and a temperature sensor to measure the temperature to enter and exit the barometer mode while in the timekeeping time mode press the mode button and that's the first function from the standard timekeeping mode and the barometer or the barrel will appear on the upper sub dial uh, indicating that the barometric pressure and temperature measurements are in progress the measurements will appear on the display after about five seconds and they are the measurements as well as temperature and the hectopascal value um, after you press the c or the mode button the watch will take readings every five seconds for the first three minutes and then every two minutes after that um, barometric pressure is displayed in the units of one hectopascals or uh, 0.5 of the uh, in aig and the temperature is displayed of units uh, of 0 0.1 or 0.1 degrees celsius or 0.2 fahrenheit the, the range of the temperature measurements are the uh, minus 10 to 60 degrees celsius you can select either uh, hectopascals or the imperial units as well as uh, Fahrenheit or the Celsius. Uh, pressure in differential level indicator, that's this, uh, this, bar, this bar over here. Uh, this indicator shows the relative difference between the most uh, recent barometric pressure reading and the current barometric pressure value displayed in the barometer or the thermometer mode. So here's the screenshot for you to better understand it. I want to interpret the barometric pressure differential level, levels. Well, uh, here is the graph so you can better understand it. But it basically means when it's on the plus side, pressure is rising and weather will tend to improve. When it's on the minus side, pressure is falling and weather will tend to uh, deteriorate. Pressure sensor and temperature sensor calibration. Well, the pressure sensor and temperature sensor built in into watch and calibrated at the factory and the normal required no further adjustments. If you uh, notice serious error in the pressure readings and temperature readings produced by the watch, you can calibrate the sensor to the reading of another device to correct these errors. So basically that would be the uh, barometer mode uh, or the uh, sensor uh, review. The altimeter mode. This watch displays altitude values based on air pressure readings taken by a built-in pressure sensor. How it works? Well, it can measure the altitude based on its own preset values. And that's the initial default metal or using the reference, reference altitude specified by you. Uh, data produced by the watch barometric pressure um, sensor is converted to approximate altitude, uh, altitude based value. Um, how to enter the altimeter mode? Well, in the standard timekeeping mode, press the ALT button and this will appear, LT will appear on the uh, sub-dial over here. Uh, that would indicate the altimeter measurement is in progress. The first reading will appear on the display after about uh, five, after uh, uh, four or five seconds after you press the LT button. The current altitude is in displayed in the units of five meters or 20 feet. After the first reading is obtained, the watch continues to take altimeter readings automatically every 5 seconds for the first 3 minutes and then every 2 minutes after that. If you leave the watch in the altimeter world, it will update the displayed altitude value regularly. Temperature is measured in the uh, barometer or thermometer mode and, in, and also in the altimeter mode. After you finish with the using the altimeter, scroll down the or press the C button or the mode button to return to the time keeping mode basically those will be the um, uh, basics of the altimeter mode but there's also a, a procedure where you can set the, uh, set the reference value <clears throat> in the altimeter mode uh, hold down the uh, adjust button until the current altitude value begins to flash and there it is 
it's flashing. This is the setting screen. Before before the reference altitude value starts to flash, the message said hold, and that was the, that appeared. And um, how to uh, change the current reference altitude value by five meters? Pressing these two buttons over here. So pressing the LT and the light button, I can adjust the value. Specify reference altitude value based on the uh, accurate um, altitude information about your current location. That's a map or something like that. Um, pressing those two buttons will arrange that. And once we are done, we can press the uh, A button or the adjust button to return to the uh, altimeter mode. How does it work? Well, generally, uh, first of all, let's put in the screenshot so you can uh, look at it while I'm telling you a few things about it. So generally, air pressure and temperature decreases as the altitude increases. This watch bases its altitude measurements on international standard atmosphere, or the ISA values, simulated uh, by the International Civil Aviation Organization. These values define the relationships between the altitude, air pressure, and the temperature. And with that, I'm going to finish with this ultimate review and uh, thank you very much for watching hope you like this review and um, please do leave a like and subscribe for more this watch contents thanks